orthogonally diagonalize the matrix by finding an orthogonal matrix Q and diagonal matrix D, such that the product of the transpose of Q times matrix A times matrix Q equals the diagonal matrix D. So keeping in mind that matrix Q is the orthogonal matrix whose column vectors are defined by the normalized eigenvectors, and that the diagonal matrix D is the diagonal matrix whose entries along the main diagonal are the eigenvalues of matrix A, the first thing that we need to do is find the eigenvalues and their corresponding eigenspaces to identify the eigenvectors. So here we go. We want to start by finding matrix A minus lambda times the two by two identity matrix. So we have matrix A, which is six, four, four, six, and we are adding the two by two matrix minus lambda, zero, zero, minus lambda. And combining up those like terms, we are left with six minus lambda, four, four, six minus lambda. Now from here, we need to find the determinant of this matrix. So we are looking for the determinant of matrix A minus lambda times the two by two identity. So we have six minus lambda, four, four, six minus lambda. And computing this determinant, we're left with six minus lambda squared minus 16. So expanding this binomial product, we have 36 minus 12 lambda plus lambda squared minus 16, which we can combine up those like terms to get the characteristic polynomial, lambda squared minus 12 lambda plus 20, which fortunately factors to lambda minus 10 multiplied by lambda minus 2. Now, taking this characteristic polynomial and setting it equal to zero, we see that the resulting eigenvalues are lambda equals 10 and lambda equals two. So now that we have these eigenvalues of matrix A, we need to find their corresponding eigenspaces. So case number one, Let's consider when lambda is equal to 10. So we start by finding matrix A minus 10 times the two by two identity. So we have six, four, four, six for our matrix A, and we are adding the two by two matrix, negative 10, zero, zero, minus 10. Combining up those like terms, we are left with the two by two matrix, negative four, 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 negative four. So to identify the eigenspace, we now need to row reduce this matrix augmented with the zero vector in order to identify the solution set for this homogeneous equation. So we can immediately reduce this matrix by scaling the first row by a factor of negative one fourth, and let's do the same thing to the second row. So this leaves us with the matrix one minus one, negative one, one, and taking our first pivot, we can eliminate the entry below it simply by adding the first row to the second row, which leaves us with the matrix one, negative one, zero, zero. So we have attained row reduced echelon form, and this matrix in reduced form is letting us know that x sub one is equal to x sub two, and that x sub two is a free variable. So the null space for this homogeneous equation is defined by vector x in R2, where x sub one is equal to x sub two, and x sub two is itself because it's a free variable. Factoring out that common scalar x sub two, we have x sub two multiplied by the vector one one. So we can say that therefore the eigenspace for lambda equals 10 is defined by the span of the vector one one. 
So the eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals 10 is the vector with components 1, 1. So now we need to do the same thing, but when lambda is equal to 2. So again, we need to find matrix A minus 2 times the 2 by 2 identity. So we have the matrix 6, 4, 4, 6. And we are adding the 2 by 2 matrix, negative 2, 0, 0, negative 2. And combining up those like terms, we have the 2 by 2 matrix, 4, 4, 4, 4. So we now want to go ahead and find the null space for this matrix by augmenting the matrix with the zero vector. And again, we can immediately reduce this matrix by scaling the first row by one fourth, and we'll do the same thing with our second row. So this leaves us with the cute two by two matrix, one, 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 one. And taking our first pivot, we can eliminate the entry below it by doing a minus one times the first row plus the second row, which leaves us with the matrix one, one, zero, zero, which again is in row reduced echelon four and letting us know that x sub one is equal to minus x sub two and that x sub two is a free variable. So we can say that the null space is the set of all vectors in x sub two or in R sub two with the components X sub one, X sub two, where X sub one is defined as minus X sub two and X sub two is itself because it's free. So factoring out that scalar multiple X sub two, we are left with the vector negative one, one. And we can conclude that the eigenspace for lambda equals two is the set spanned by the vector negative one, one. Beautiful. So we can now conclude, based on these eigenspaces, that the eigenvectors of matrix A are the vectors 1, 1 and negative 1, 1. Now, looking at these eigenvectors, we can certainly tell that they are orthogonal to each other. However, they're not unit vectors. So in order to find the column vectors of matrix Q, our orthogonal matrix, we need to normalize the eigenvectors of matrix A. So here we go. We can say that column vector Q sub 1 is defined by normalizing eigenvector V sub 1. So we have vector V sub 1 with the components 1, 1, and the length we have the square root of 1 squared is 1, plus 1 squared is 1. So we have a scalar multiple of 1 by the square root of 2, multiplied by this eigenvector. And distributing that scalar multiple through, we have the vector with components 1 by the square root of 2, 1 by the square root of 2. And very similarly, we can define the second column vector, q sub 2, by normalizing the second eigenvector, v sub 2. So eigenvector v sub 2 has the components negative 1, 1, with the same length, square root of 2. So we have our scalar multiple, 1 by the square root of 2, multiplied by the vector with components, negative 1, 1. And distributing that scalar multiple through, we have the components negative 1 by the square root of 2, 1 by the square root of 2. So therefore, we can say that the orthogonal matrix Q, the matrix with the column vectors Q sub 1, Q sub 2, is the 2 by 2 matrix, 1 by the square root of 2, 1 by the square root of 2, minus 1 by the square root of 2, 1 by the square root of 2. Beautiful! So we can even take this one step further and using our answer for matrix Q, we can find the transpose of matrix Q, which is the matrix with the row vectors, Q sub 1, Q sub 2. 
So we have the 2 by 2 matrix, 1 by the square root of 2, 1 by the square root of 2, negative 1 by the square root of 2, 1 by the square root of 2. So now that we have our orthogonal matrix Q and the transpose of this matrix, we're ready to identify the diagonal matrix. And we know that our diagonal matrix D is the matrix, the diagonal matrix, whose entries along the main diagonal are the eigenvalues of matrix A. So our diagonal matrix D is the 2 by 2 matrix, 10, 0, 0, 2. And with this diagonal matrix D, we are officially ready to orthogonally diagonalize matrix A. So recall that we need the transpose of matrix Q multiplied by matrix A multiplied by the orthogonal matrix Q being equal to the diagonal matrix D, making this our beautiful final answer.